What happened to Wyman? Welcome to the future. That's a blast from the past. So back in like 2006, Intel and a bunch of other technology companies and Sprint put out the standard WiMAX, which was meant to be the first 4G technology capable of wirelessly sending 25 megabits to devices from cell phone towers. And for a while, it was the hot new thing. LTE wasn't finished. In a lot of ways, WiMAX was better. It was faster. It could send and receive on a single channel where LTE needed two different channels. There were all kinds of cool things about it. So Sprint poured a lot of money into it. They built Clear for a while. Got up to several hundred, more than 500 different providers with WiMAX networks around the world. But by 2010, I think everyone realized LTE was going to win. AT&T, Verizon, Deutsche Telekom, T-Mobile, Vodafone, all threw themselves behind LTE. And after that, the writing was kind of on the wall. WiMAX went for a few more years, but ultimately people just abandoned it for LTE. So if WiMAX was faster in the beginning, what was better about LTE? One, it was better for the carriers because there was a smoother upgrade path to go from the 3G on the towers. There was coming out equipment that could do 3G and 4G. They could upgrade their towers. It was much smoother for the operator. There were nice little technical things. Like both of them are based on OFDM, which is this radio technology where you send lots of very slow, skinny signals in a row. So it looks like a fat signal, and it is with high bandwidth. But actually inside it are lots of little signals that are going very slowly, and you add them all up to get high speed. And so both LTE and WiMAX are based on that. But in LTE, the slow signals are more widely spaced. There's 15 kilohertz between them. And in WiMAX, there's only 10 kilohertz between them, which doesn't sound like a big deal until you're driving. And so WiMAX ran into problems at 120 kilometers per hour, which is 75 miles an hour where LTE was fine up to 350 kilometers per hour, which is 200 miles an hour. So on the highway with WiMAX, you hit 75 miles an hour, you'd lose your internet. Most people wouldn't notice most of the time, but it's an annoying thing. As you get more into maps and stuff, streaming music on the highway, I hate to say it, but on I-95, people go above 75 miles an hour and losing internet every time you do that, eh, that's an issue. One of the differences is that WiMAX tends to use these wider signals and they were running it all up at 2.5 gigahertz right above the Wi-Fi. Where the LTE, although it was slower and it had to use two different channels, one for sending and one for receiving at the beginning, it could run on lower bands. It could run down at 1900 megahertz, at 850 megahertz, down in those channels. So although it was slower, it went further. And for the carriers, this is so important. They've got their towers where they've got their towers and they want to slap radios on there and cover the whole area. And so LTE would cover the same area as the 3G. So if they had a working 3G network, They could just put up the LTE radios, Mm. which were like nicely compatible with the 3G, by the way. They were made to work together. So you could transition from 3G to 4G. And they'd know that they had sort of the same area covered. But with MyMax, you've got higher speeds, but shorter range. And this is a problem for them. They don't want to put up whole new towers. Mm, They they, don't want big gaps in coverage. And they don't want big gaps in coverage. I mean, it's so much work to get a city to agree to put up a tower or whatever. They want to just be able put the radios on the same towers. And that was a problem with WiMAX. There were a lot of problems for the carriers to provide service to all their existing customers. Another issue with the 2.5 gigahertz is it was shorter range and it didn't get into buildings as well. I know there's a a large company here in Philadelphia who doubled down on the WiMAX and discovered it didn't make it into their headquarters. They did all this physics modeling and they worked with Clear and they just discovered that their silver coated windows were reflecting the signal better than anyone expected. So what they ended up doing, which not everyone can do, is is putting a WiMAX base station inside the elevator shaft of their building. So it shot up and down into every floor and that's how they fixed their problem. But that stuff just doesn't happen with LTE. And so I think a lot of it is that choice of... High frequencies, 2.5 gigahertz, it doesn't penetrate things nearly as well as 800 megahertz, 900 megahertz. So did WiMAX kill Sprint? Well, so Sprint put a lot of money into Clear. And then in around 2011, they put another $1.6 billion. They loaned it to them. And then at the end, as Clear failed and they tried to write it off, the judge actually ruled that all those debts were now Sprints, that they couldn't just lose it when they closed their division. So Sprint ended out saddled with a 
lot of debt over this big adventure and a lot of wasted effort building this 2.5 gigahertz WiMAX network that just went nowhere. And they ended up shutting down the whole WiMAX network in, in 2015. So it's now been 10 years since the end of this adventure, if that's what you want to call it. Have you ever used WiMAX before? Oh yeah, I was a happy WiMAX customer. I had this clear 4G USB dongle and it was cool. You could plug it into any computer and it didn't need any drivers and you were instantly on 4G WiMAX. And you know, you'd get 20 megabits, which was a lot at the time. I was a very happy customer. Make sure you hit that subscribe button for more tech discussions like this one.